hello. Welcome to New Planner Day. Well, this is probably going up after New Planner Day, but um, it is New Planner Day nonetheless, and we're going to go ahead and jump in to my 2023 Moxie Life. I am using the Flagship Horizontal um, this year with the Blackberry Fields cover by Cindy at Llama Letters. Um, I love this cover. I think it is gorgeous, and I am excited to use it this year. Um, so today, we're going to kind of jump in and get started with the first part Um and the first step in the Moxie Life system. And um, let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and I already wrote my name um, and my Instagram handle and my email address there for my planner account um, on the front page. Um, I did it off camera. I've learned in the past, don't do it on camera because I always make a mistake. So I'm gonna come back and kind of decorate um, this cover page later on, but for now it is ready to go. Um, so our focus today is going to be in the goal setting section. I've gone ahead and already worked through some of the getting started here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Um, and in this here, um, what I've done is I've kind of just gone through and highlighted um, using my Moxie markers um, and underlying things that kind of resonated with me or things that I want to remember when I'm working through. Um, so one of the big things I kind of, you know, this statement of be good to yourself, like I really, you know, feel like that is one of the big things that I've been working on over the past few years. And I want to continue with that this year. Um, and then further down this page, it kind of talks through and walks through, move those pens out of the way, um, the different, um, features within the weekly and the daily pages and I went through and I kind of focused in on some of the things and the ways that I'm going to be using them. So there are weekly notes pages. These are doc grid pages um, and I am going to be using these for reflections, journaling, and weekly highlights. Um, for the most part in this planner, um, I usually do my weekly reflections in my daily planner and in this planner I do use them but they're more of journaling to myself. So they're more private. I don't share them a lot um, on online um, just because they're more um, an inner conversation with me about what's going on um, and just more personal things. But, um, you know, every once in a while I will share them, but for the most part, they're more personal. Um, the weekly tips at the bottom of those pages are great. I have used them many times and I kind of decided that this year I really want to focus in on these weekly tips as my focus for affirmations. Um, and a few years ago I started, well, really this past year, I really started using affirmations in my weekly planning, um, within my memory keeping in my flagship planner. Um, and I really found that it was very helpful, um, in just so many ways in my life. I got the idea from Sarah Cat. Um, I think it's, she's changed her name now, but it used to be Sarah Cat Plans. Um, but um, she has is really great with affirmations and she really inspired me um, to kind of incorporate more affirmations into my planning. Um, and then there's also powerful questions for your growth and learning deep, taking those the growth and learning deeper. Um, and I really want to try and um, really think through these questions when I'm journaling to myself and when I'm talking to myself and writing to myself um, here on these weekly notes pages. Um, the gratitude heart, I really don't usually use this space within the weekly planning to do my gratitude. I typically will do my gratitude um, in my monthly spread. However, I want to make sure to show and practice gratitude each and every day. I think it's important not only to show gratitude to others, but to also be grateful for things that have happened to me. Um, and then the last one is habit tracking. Um, and I think this one I'm really going to focus in on um, for many of my goals this year. Um, my big goals are going to be in the area of financial and health and wellness um, again this year. But my big, my big stretch goal this year is in the financial area. 
but I really want to prioritize healthy habits um, because I think I've gotten a good start with this, but I want it to continue. So that's kind of what I've already done up to this point. So, and I'm going to open this back up. So um, the steps, there are five steps when you are getting started with your goal setting. And today in this video, we're going to be focusing in on the first two steps. So our focus is going to be on step one, the compass assessment, and then step two, setting intentions. So let me zoom in together. All right. So, um, again, we have the compass assessment is step number one, and that's where we're going to start today. Um, so this is our starting point. And that is really a big piece that I remind myself all the time. This is just where you start, only where we start. Um, and it enables me to really better design where I want to go. Um, now, in this, we're going to be rating ourselves with the eight main areas, main areas of life with a series of statements. Each statement serves as a guidepost. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that because I think that's important. Uncovering potential blind spots and highlighting opportunities for growth. The information will be used to create your intentions vision, and goals for the upcoming year. So that's really important. So this compass assessment is really going to start um, to inform number two, which is setting intentions. So intent creates action and action creates change. So important. Um, you'll be guided to set intentions that you that will give you clarity of purpose in the coming year. These intentions will be the foundation of your goal setting. So... I'm going to highlight that. Review them often and to keep you focused. So that's another one. Review them often to keep you focused and anchored to your vision. So this is one thing that I remember that I want to make sure that I want to um, come back to them every month. quick fixes. So anyway, I really want to make sure that I'm coming back to these every single time I am doing my monthly plans um, because I think that's really important. I think it's um, a big piece to the puzzle. Um, so so um, let's go ahead and turn the page and we're going to get started on our life compass. So as you can see here, it's an important tool. Um, it's a way for us to establish a starting point, evaluate our life as a whole, embrace growth. I'm going to kind of go through this on my own and highlight and mark it up and ask myself questions and put in my own little um, steps. And then over here, you'll see this is an example of the life compass and actually where I'm going to be doing my own life compass right here. Um, <clears throat> and you can see the example there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and get started. So on the following pages, I'm going to rate myself on a scale of one to 10. Um, and one does not imply and 10 strongly applies. So now in the past, I've gone ahead and I've put in, this is kind of the scale that I've used in the past because I always had a zero instead of a one. Um, but this year, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment with this scale because it had what I like to do is I like to kind of make this more like a Likert scale so if we have strongly applies I'm going to come down to and say somewhat applies or actually I'm going to change that I'm not even going to do somewhat here. I'm going to do mostly applies. Then I'm going to come down kind of in this um, six, five range and do somewhat. And um, occasionally. So um, you can see there that it kind of, because there's no zero, it makes it uneven. So I'm going to kind of do this six and five are going to both kind of be this. 
and then I'm gonna pull this down to the three. And then that makes it a little more even. So the six and five are kind of like right in the middle. So somewhat, mostly, eh. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this scale when I'm doing my scoring here for each of these statements and then that will give me my score. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. is step one so step one we did our in each area of life add up your ratings and divide that number by eight to arrive at an average score okay okay so that's an 8.125 so I always round down um, when I'm doing my compass assessment. So my score is going to be an eight there. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Now, one thing I've noticed as I've done this in the past is that depending upon like how I'm feeling that day, my state of mind, um, you know, all those things can affect how I score myself. So I really try really hard <laughs> to do this over winter break or at a time when I'm not super busy and stressed with work or family things. So today I like had the whole day to myself. Um, you know, I kind of did what I needed to get done. I did things on my own time. I did things I wanted to do. I did things I didn't do things I didn't want to do. I got some things done and was productive. Um, but it was a good day and I'm in a good mental space. So I feel like these scores are probably really reflective of how I'm actually internalizing these statements. Um, I tend to be really hard on myself, especially if I'm not in a good mental space. So, um, I feel like looking at my scores here, this is actually pretty good and accurate for these different areas. <clears throat> Cause I have made a lot of growth over the last three years using this system. Um, as I'm looking at my scores here, they are significantly higher than what they've been in the past overall. Um, and so I do feel like there is a slow growth that happens. All right, and seven. Okay, so there's my scores. Hello. So now what I'm gonna do is come back to my compass assessment here and I'm going to go ahead and put in my actual score. Um, fill in the sections on the life, life compass that correspond with your score. Each area uh, will have a different parts of the pie graph shaded in that coincide with the rating you've given to that area of your life. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my max markers here. And I'm going to start with my personal, which was an eight. All right, next one was a seven. That was for fun and recreation. And the next one is work and learning. And this one was an eight. And then for family and relationships, it was a six. It's one of my lower ones. Health and wellness. Oops, wrong one. 
This is gonna be a seven. And then what I'm gonna do is after I'm done with this, I'm gonna kind of go through and it has that you circling the number, like kind of where you're hoping to get to. And I think what I'm gonna do is put a dotted line out there. Um, yeah, spiritual and personal growth is the next one. That is another seven. Okay, financial was a six. Okay, and physical environment was a seven. Okay, and then let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and draw that top line. All right, so consider what you would score yourself in each area of life by the end of the year. Then circle that number on your compass. So I'm going to be thinking about like looking at each of these and kind of knowing where my priority is. Um, are going to lie in the coming year. I'm going to think about where I think or where I would like to be um, by the end of like this time next year. So in December of 2023, what do I expect these to look like? So um, and what number do I want to get to? So I think for personal, I'm going to circle a nine. <laughs> Fun and recreation, I'm going to circle an eight. Work and learning, I'm going to circle a nine. Family and relationships, I'm going to circle an eight. Health and wellness, I'm going to circle a nine. Spiritual growth, I'm going to circle the eight. Financial, I'm going to circle eight. And physical environment, I'm going to circle eight. So mostly eights and nines, um, cause that's kind of where I want to get to. So yeah. So that is that step of the life compass, which is step one. So now the next step is really to work on this intentions. And so as we turn the page here, we have our assessment score that we just did. And then we have our intentions page and this is where we start to really think through what what are my intentions for this coming year and that is where this year end reflections book has really kind of I'm going to be using this a lot so this is what my scores were um, when I took this um, a couple weeks ago and you can see um, that even there, my scores have changed somewhat. I have myself at a nine here, seven, eight, seven, uh, nine, seven, seven, and eight. So for the most part, I mean, they're not as high as they were then, but you can also see, you know, the start of 2022, I've come up a very high, a lot more. So, um, you know, I've looked here at my year in review, what were my wins, what have been my highlights, what have been my challenges, lessons that I've learned, growth, gratitude, what's working, what's not working, um, adjustments. And um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to kind of use the information that I've kind of put here in this year end reflections to kind of guide my highlights and my guide, sorry, not my highlights, guide my intentions for 2023. So I'm going to go ahead and um, brainstorm and kind of jot down some notes for these um, first, and then I'm going to add in my, we'll come back and chat a little bit about what I've come up with and um, talk a little bit more about the rest of my intentions. All right, so 
went through and jotted in some notes um, after looking through my year in reflections and thinking through like kind of where my brain is at with everything. Um, so I took some notes for each of the different questions here on the top half of the intentions. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of talk through them and kind of jot down those items here. So what could I use more of in my life this year? I have several things positive self-image, exercise, committing to goals, thinking or planning through for the future and routines. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and jot those down here. of space here so I did have to like kind of consolidate so what could I use less of in my life I have spending excuses procrastination and negative self-talk all right um characteristics I would like to nurture this year that's interesting I totally just skipped that one on my notes so I'm gonna go ahead and skip it here and come back to it um because I have the other ones done daily routines um, is going to be one of my habits. I totally skipped that question. That's so funny. Close my rings. Every day I want to close them. And healthy eating. Okay, this year I will be more and I have debt free, happy, healthy, purposeful, committed to my goals. Okay, um, I will do less ex making excuses, spending money, and apologizing. I have a habit of apologizing for things that are not, have nothing to do with me, that are not really mine to apologize for. <laughs> I will give my gray a self grace. I have established healthy eating habits, taking time for my self care. Then I will let go of unrealistic expectations, clutter in our home, shame around eating and weight. Because even though I've lost a lot of weight, um, I still have shame around weight and what I eat and things like that. So. last one embrace work-life balance time off with family deeper connections with friends all right so um coming back to characteristics i would like to nurture this year i'm going to take a look at what i wrote down for that last year so as I'm thinking like characteristics. Hmm, mm, mm, mm. I'm kind of thinking um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down here one of the things that this since the pandemic that we have struggled with um, is attending church. So we were really good about attending church and then the pandemic happened and I just haven't, and then I wasn't comfortable going and then there's just been a long line of excuses of why um, and I feel like I'm missing something by not going. Um, and I think that I want to make that a little bit of a priority on the side. Um, 
So making my spiritual journey and attend mass a larger priority. Okay, so there are my intentions. So now the last step here on this setting intention section is to work on my word of the year. So, um, you know, it talks about how reflecting on your answers to the question, brainstorm a list of words that resonate with you and encompass what you see in an ideal year ahead, narrow your choice to a single word that embodies all your intentions. Make sure your word inspires you and is something you can commit to fully. Your chosen word will serve as a guidepost for your priorities and decisions that you will make in the coming year. Um, and what I like to do is I like to choose a word that then when I'm doing my goals, which is the next section of this pro setting goal setting process that I will handle tackle in the next video, um, I will connect this word to each one of the eight areas of life and kind of tell how that word connects to each of those areas. So last year, my word was transform. The year before, I believe, was progress. Um, I can't remember what the first one was. Um, but anywho, so like I've, I really feel like this word every year has been really monumental in what I've managed to accomplish. So this past year, the word was transform. And you know, I really wasn't thinking of it in terms of a physical transformation when I started with it, but it really did become a physical transformation. I lost 90 pounds um, and it also became an internal transformation as well in the way that I viewed myself and the way that I viewed others and the way that I, you know, kind of acted and how I engaged with things. Um, so I really felt like that was, that word really, really embodied everything that I focused on last year. Um, and this year I feel like I'm not really starting anything new. Like I am gonna go back and really focus on debt and um, my financial goals and I'm gonna continue to work on my health goals, but I'm really not starting anything new. So I've continued to kind of come back to these words of commitment, discipline, um, steadfast. Um, and that's kind of where I'm like thinking of for this word. Um, so, you know, those are kind of the words that I've been kind of mulling around. Um, and what I've done too, is I've, I've kind of gone into, um, you know, like words of the year and thinking about, you know, what, you know, each word means, um, you know, so like steadfast is firm in one's allegiance. So, you know, is that my word? So this word steadfast really connects to this idea of firm. So these are kind of the words that I keep like kind of coming back to. Another word, relentless. Constant. So many good words, so many good words. I don't even know if it cut out there. It told me I had a low battery, so I should probably wrap this up quickly. So, um, as I'm looking at these words, like these are kind of the words that, that have kind of come to me. Really, that word steadfast is really what I like have kind of like, at first I was thinking disciplined, commitment, um, you know, things like that, like continued constant like those were kind of words but I really feel like that word steadfast is that firm like I am firmly saying this is what I'm focusing on and this is what I want because as you've seen 
up here, there is places where I've said, stop apologizing, stop making excuses, um, you know, make better choices, things like that. So I think, I think, I think I'm going to go with the word steadfast. So how am I going to write this? <laughs> this is again where you don't write on camera. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to come right. So here is my final intentions page. Um, I went ahead and added a little bit of color to the prompts. Um, I added my word steadfast here at the bottom. And then what my word means to me, I will be steadfast in my pursuit of my goals in 2023. I will stand firm in the actions needed to accomplish my goals, ownership, not excuses. So that is where I'm at for this evening um, in this session. Um, so, so far tonight we went through goals one and two and um, what I'm going to be talking about in my next um, video, which will probably go up um, somewhere around the 29th, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about step three, which is that annual goals and that vision. Um, and then after that, we're going to work on the monthly goals and weekly actions, um, and also my notes pages. So I want to thank you for joining me tonight as I started to plan out in my Moxie Life, um, flagship horizontal, working on my goal setting process. And I will be back, um, soon with the next step and share more about my planning process with you. I'll make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will catch you in the next video. Also, if you haven't done so, make sure you leave me a comment um, down below. Tell me a little bit about um, what your word of the year is and how you're planning on using that word throughout the year in your goal planning um, or just your planning in general. So I will catch you all later. Thanks so much for joining. Bye.